Hello, today we're going to be having a look at the Warlord class, represented today by our friend Achlandi de Zon. She is an Orc veteran, she's been through many wars, you can see she's lost an eye, she's lost, well, a big chunk out of her cheek there. She just wants to retire. She's come out here to the islands, find a nice little place, retirement home, and what does she find? She finds it's absolutely bloody freezing and it's full of filthy dwarves and stuff like that, messing up her views. Now, this is in the middle of the game. Uh, this is actually a genuine game. I've been playing it myself for the last couple of days, testing things out. And as you can see, I've been doing some remodeling. I've cast a spell. It's called... Well, let's have a minute find it. Tropical Empire. This isn't actually a Warlord spell. This is from my fire specialization that I've chosen. And what's happening is I'm slowly spreading tropical terrain out from all of my cities. Now, orcs, as a race... Look at this guy. Orcs generally, they don't mind tropical. Fact, in this particular city, they love it. Lots of races, however, don't like tropicals, tropical terrain. So that means if somebody would say, a dwarf who dislikes tropical was going to come along, they'd be at a disadvantage fighting in my land. So there is a reason to do this. I can also let me make use of another fire spell called Domain of the Sun, which I've already cast on a lot of my cities. What this does is it modifies the city to tell it the city and everyone next to it loves the tropical area. So I've cast it on this city. Look how happy they are! Fantastic. Now, just finished a piece of research. Let's have a look. Warlord is all about battle, all about fighting. And not only do they get lots of powerful fighting units, they also get a lot of abilities that improve the, uh, the units that they've already got. So this affects every single archer, cavalryman, infantryman, pikeman, just about every single fighting unit that you've got and gives them more martial arts. That's plus five against opportunity attacks and retaliation attacks. It's huge, a very big adv advantage in battle. So we're gonna have to select new research for us now. See, we've got um, our spell book, what we can choose now. F now, summon fire elemental, once again from our fire research. That gives us a nice, sort of powerful, big, tough monster. Uh, authority of the sword that lets us grow the domain of one of our cities and I think we will choose thoroughbred mount what this is going to do is give plus 15 hit points to every single cavalryman we've got we have a lot of cavalry so there we go um, go for our events quickly fit by domain of the sun we've made a monster hunter somewhere festival of magic now all of our cities are very happy due to the aforementioned Domain of the Sun spell. That means occasionally they'll randomly generate events like this, which is giving us bonus mana. Um, what are we going to do first? Now, as you can see, I've pretty much locked down this whole place, and I was just about to start sending my scouts out to explore the nearby area. I've got a nice little island. As you can see, it's still green, so I haven't got anything over here. And this is one of our heroes. Irelis Faithhand, he's actually a theocrat, and he's leading a little army, and let's go in here. This is a tomb, usually has magic items and stuff for us that we can use to make our heroes better, and maybe some, a bit of extra money and things. Have a look, see what's inside. So, we're going to be fighting against some undead, and a hellhound. Should be fun, let's get to it. Okay, here we are, deep underground, about to fight the evil forces of the undead. Here comes our Archon casters. Archons are a race from the previous game where they were called the Hymen, a bunch of angelic creatures. They disappeared after a mysterious event and now only the undead remnants remain. We also have some hellhounds and a carrion bird here. Now, we're in a tomb. There's a special effect, mass curse. All of our units are for minus two resistance and minus two defense, which is actually fairly big bad news for us. Orcs, although they're tough and strong, naturally have a lower resistance than other races, which means we take extra damage from um, non-physical sources, such as the ice bolts that you saw the casters fire. Now, what have we got in our army? We have got here monster hunters. Now, monster hunters are a kind of irregular, so highly mobile, ranged, close combat sort of everything unit. Main thing that they can do is they have Monster Slayer, which is plus three damage against all monsters. Makes them very good for clearing out treasure sites like this. So they're going to do extra damage against these carrion birds over here. But also extra damage against this hellhound who's kind of hiding over in the corner over there. Also have these. It's the Warbreed, one of my favorite warlord units. It's a big, beefy, tier three monstrosity. Half orc, half ogre. It's a 
consequence of some kind of horrible, ill-fated eugenics program. Big spiky club. Love it. And here we have a horse archer, the kind of sort of based on the famous Mongolian warriors who swept across the steppes. Nice fairy hat, not particularly appropriate for the um, tropical area that we've made, but you know, it's a fashion statement. And finally, these guys, berserkers, half naked, big axe, only need armor on their shoulders. Let's go, guys. Basically, they sit somewhere between infantry and cavalry. They're very fast, hit very hard, they charge, and they're one of the, the starting warlord units. Very nice to have. You'll also notice that this guy and mo all of our other units have plus one spirit damage. I've chosen an ability for Irilis here, our theocrat, called Sacred Arms. And what that means is every single unit in the army gets plus one spirit strength, which is extremely useful when fighting the undead. Now, let's get to it. So I think biggest threat is probably this carrion bird, since he does blight damage. So send in the warbreed first to try and absorb some hits. They're guarding, so there's no point in trying to flank them. Guarding units can't be flanked. Bang. As you can see, he hits hard and he, doesn't, and he um, can take a few hits as well. So the monster hunter should be able to come in and finish this guy off. Looks like it. Take him down. Chop. Whoop. Now, what else? Okay, now Theocrats are very, very good against the undead. You'll see here 40% spirit weakness just with a charge. And just with a charge, we can already take him down to almost no health. But we have a pure spirit ray attack. So let's see, is that enough to kill him? 8 to 12 times 2. Now we'll just charge him and ram, ram him. Bye. Donk. He survived. Oops. <laughs> Someone else come in and finish him off? The undead are actually quite tough. Especially against normal ranged attacks. We'll plink away at him, but I think he's going to... He'll be surviving into next turn. Okay? Now, these guys are coming around over here, so we'll send the Berserkers to try and pin them down. You can see Martial Arts here is reducing the amount of damage that we take from his physical retaliation, but it does not help us against the fire attacks. And Orcs, having low resistance, are weak against fire attacks. So they do damage, but they get hit hard back. Who else have we got? Send in the Mounted Archers as well. Yeah, not much we can do with them. So I come send them over here to, here to help with the Hellhounds. That's it. See if maybe... Um, probably too late now, isn't it? Oh, we don't even have any casting points because I spent it all on the world map. So can't cast any spells either. Okay, let's see what we can do. See what the independents have to say. Okay, yep. healer guys just healed himself. And ouch. Looks like I rather foolishly <laughs> left my hero exposed there, so... The archers are taking advantage of that. And what happened over there? Yep, looks like our berserkers managed to finish off the hellhounds. And now, what are we going to do? Let's flank these archers and try and get rid of them. They're a pain. Can we kill them? Yep, nice couple of nice flanking attacks and they go straight down. And finally, this guy. Now, our hero here is actually in a bit of trouble. He's only got 11 hit points left, so cut two hits and he'll go down. So once again, maybe bring in backup from the Warbreed. Takes a lot more than some wimpy dead mage to stop that guy. Donk. And that's the end of them, and the tomb is ours. Okay, so let's see what prizes we've won in there. Looks like some money and a unicorn. Now, this is a mount item, which Irilis here can ride. Currently, he has a Hellhound, which gives him black protection, fire protection, and an ability with extra damage against pikemen and shielded units. The Unicorn, on the other hand, gives him Phase. Phase is a once a turn a battle ability that lets him teleport to another location. Very handy for getting into trouble or for getting out of trouble. Nice tactical thing, so let's um, use that instead. Now, not only can you find items in treasure sites, we can actually make our own. And in, I believe it's this city over here, I actually have an item forge set up. So I can show you how we can make an item. So Irilis, our little champion over there, has been doing so well, we've decided we want to give him a sword. Oh, what kind of sword? Well, any kind of sword, really. Swords can carry any of the offensive enchantments. So we can give him extra damage on a different damage channel. We can make him better at slaying animals, draconians, orcs, anything we like, really. Better at fighting against evil, better at fighting against good. 
better at, well, yeah, better at fighting in general. <laughs> That's what we want. We can even give him the ability to knock down walls. So let's, he's a bit of a theocrat. He's a, he's a holy champion. So what should we give him? I know. Oglandi will give him a holy club. Big, stompy, holy club to help him on his way. Because he's a uh, theocrat into spirit damage. So give him a nice bit of spirit damage there. And the ability to strike down dwarves. Hate dwarves. And we'll call the weapon Dwarf Smasher. Lovely. Now, it's going to cost a bit of money. It's going to take a while to mail, so we'll just forge that. But in the best traditions of television, I can show you some stuff I've already made over on Earthlandi over here. She's got Dab Urna. A big flaming axe gives a plus four fire damage whenever she strikes. And hot stuff, a fire aura shield. So anytime anyone tries to hit her, there's a chance that the person hitting her will catch fire. She's also got some stuff that we found from um, other treasure types, riding a unicorn, popular in fashion this summer. Now, where are we? Up here in the frozen north where Achlandi's exploring, we've come across a dwarven stronghold here. They're grey independents. Now, Normally, we, we could negotiate with these people. We could pay them to open their borders. We could bribe them. Maybe even they would join our empire for just money. Or they could give us a quest. But we're a warlord. We're about war and battle. So prepare to be destroyed, little dwarves. We're coming to get you. We've got a very powerful army, Mr. Klandi. We have orc manticore riders. They're the tier four warlord unit. Big, scary, huge amounts of damage. High defense, lots of hit points. Definitely something you want to have on your side. Also got Orc Shock Trooper. Now, this isn't actually a Warlord unit. This is an Orc unit, so any Orc can build these. Once again, very strong, inflicts bleeding wounds. It has Tireless, so that means it doesn't spend action points when it retaliates. Its only weakness is its low resistance, so it's very vulnerable to attacks which don't hit it on the physical channel. We've also, for whatever reason, got a Dwarf Prospector. I think I won him as a prize from doing some kind of mission or something, yeah. Whatever, time for you to kill your kinsmen. No real reason to do manual combat here. None of these dwarves are particularly powerful, so we'll just auto-combat it. Splat. We win! If we really wanted to, we could click this button and we could watch a replay and see what the AI did for us here. But this is now our city. Edo Ambag. Now, we could absorb it if we wanted, keep it as a dwarf city, and then later on we could make dwarf units. Strategically, that might be a good idea. Dwarves are more expensive than units of other races, but they have plus one resistance and plus one defense, making them generally the best troops in the game, or statistical average. But, you know, we're here. We don't want any stinking little dwarves messing up our summer holiday, so migrate to orcs. Yep. Now, because of our spell, Tropical Empire, from next turn onwards, very slowly, summer, summer loving... It's going to start spreading out from this city. And that's enough for now, because we've got no casting points. It'd be nice to be able to use some magic in battle. But, okay, new turn. That was quick. <laughs> that was extremely quick. Wow. Okay, well, as you can see, it's now very sunny over here. <laughs> I believe that because every s I've been running this spell for such a long time that... Most of my cities are full of tropical, so all of the tropical generating output from all of my cities has been dumped into this place at once and brought instant desertification. So look, we're bringing the sunshine at high speed. <laughs> Sorry, that was actually completely unexpected. I'd forgotten that the spell worked like that. Now, over up here in the northeast, we have another of our little exploratory missions. This is Imena the Night Owl. She's an arch druid hero. She's got a very powerful army, a couple of manticore riders, an orc shock trooper, and an orc black knight, normal orky cavalry, and this guy, the last of the warlord units we haven't seen anymore, a phalanx, with a big spiky Mohican helmet. Now, phalanx is a type of pikeman, which means they do extra damage against horsemen and flying units. They are basically designed for killing heroes and flying tier fours. And we are going to capture this thing over here. <laughs> They're scared. 
No mercy. We are engaging the independent forces in this, the heart of the tropics. The heart of the tropics is a special structure. Once it's in our domain, nobody in our empire will suffer morale penalties for um, being in tropical terrain. Not that we suffer that anyway, but we don't want this to fall into the hands of the enemy. So it's defended by some spiders. And this guy, I think that's a fell horse. And a fire elemental, which I believe, if we wished, we could research, and we could have one of those as well. Now, let's start off, see if we can do some magic. Lots of effective spells here. Imena, being an arch druid, for example, could cast Hornet Swarm. It's a sort of version of Chain Lightning, which uses Blight damage instead of Lightning damage. However, as you can see, not really very effective against these guys. Most of these creatures have some kind of Blight protection. So, not going to use that. So, going to cast a spell from outside. Fireball's always fun, but we want a more of a Warlord spell. So, let's try Berserk. What Berserk will do is make the enemy unit melee attack the closest unit to it, regardless of what it will be. So, let's try it on this horsey. 40% chance of success. Is it going to work? No. Oh, well. I mean, we were never about magic anyway. It might have been usually that spell is more effective against creatures who aren't guarding. So he's a bit more um, well defended against that. Now, the Manticore Riders can move the fastest. So we're going to send this guy all the way over to the back here to tie up this Fire Elemental. The Fire Elemental is probably the biggest threat. He's flying in there. Bash it him. Fire Elemental is... Tier 3, so even though with our martial arts to protect us against the physical hit, we still took a fair amount of damage. We've also been affected by Immolated. Immolated means that we suffer 3 damage every turn, our physical strength has been reduced, as well as our defense and our resistance. So, bad news there. But it's a Tier 4 Manticore Rider, so probably doesn't really need to worry. What else have we got? The Phalanx can move in against these Hunter Spiders. They have the ability to cripple people on strike, although that guy resisted it. Crippled units can't move as far each turn. Manticore Riders fly in to finish them off. Oh, coming in. Donk. Bye-bye. And the Shock Troopers can come in and hit these spiders. Donk. Oh, they no, didn't laugh very long either. And the Black Knights can charge. Oh, <laughs> can't charge anywhere because they're out of move range. And, ooh, as I mentioned earlier, we can teleport because we're riding a unicorn. However, since we're an arch druid, we also have the Befriend Animal ability, which I've taught her. Is this going to work on this fell horse? Do we have a new horsey friend? We have a new horsey friend! Hello! Fantastic. Okay, end turn. See what they're going to try and do. Not much. <laughs> Been a bit of a blitzkrieg for them, so... Oh! They're hitting my horse! Leave my horse alone! Okay, you'll pay for that. <laughs> no one touches my little pony and lives. So, where do we go from here? Well, we have many tools to help us. We have battlefield spells, such as Bloodbath, which grants plus five damage to every unit on the field. Relentless Army, which gives all of our units tireless, allowing them to retaliate and do opportunity attacks for free. On the world map, we have spells like Death March, which doubles an army's move points whilst that removing their health. We have Conqueror's Feast, which makes the morale effects of invasions more pronounced. All leading up to the ultimate spell, Global Assault, which grants every single one of our units charge, first strike, and promotes them to elite rank. 